Episode 132, John Bonet Case, What Caused This Fracture 2? Okay, this time you can see I've upped my game on this video. And we're going to do three experiments with three different objects. And I think you have to have an open mind and eliminate your preconceived ideas. Because the first thing that I noticed was her skull was much smaller than you're thinking. And therefore the injury on her skull is much smaller than you're thinking. So to give you a comparison, here's a look at my hand. The indentation on John Bonet's skull was one and three quarters inches by a half an inch. You can see this is quite small. You can see, or at least I can see, that the mag flashlight, the head of the flashlight, is way too big to leave that kind of indentation in John Bonet's skull. The indentation is much smaller. And that also would rule out a baseball bat and many other objects. It has to be something much smaller. Okay, now it's time to introduce our weapons. And since I used a trophy last time and it was too large, I'm going to use a smaller trophy and I'll do that one last. So the first object that we're going to use is a root beer bottle. And so we will smash a bottle on the back of the head. Then we're going to use this wrench, power grip wrench, because it has a rectangular edge. And then we're going to use this socket wrench. And I was surprised how, what this one's like. Experiment number one. Boy, the tension's mounting, isn't it? Well, experiment number one doesn't really do anything. It just puts a big dent like that. You can barely see. And so it seemed to not be successful. We're going to move on to the next one. Maybe it has to do with these styrofoam heads. We'll see. Experiment number two. Here you can see it's much closer to that injury. Uh, but it's the direction that I'm hitting with. So I gotta alter that. Experiment number three. All right, well, there's a bunch of different things you realize here when you're doing this experiment. One, I'm on her left side. She's facing down and I'm on her left and I come across with my right hand and hit her right on the back of the skull. And uh, I'm hitting about as hard as I can. I'm kind of tired. And uh, I can't remember what I was gonna say. Bonus experiment. Oh, 
Okay, you can see that was with the trophy and you can see the indentation. It's bigger than the real indentation. So what I've concluded is it's pretty clear to me it was some kind of a wrench kind of object like this but it's rectangular shaped and then also on these spots right here I think there was a little screw with the square head on it here and then down here if you look at the skull fracture photo to the left there's like a little something here and a little something there and I, I think that's what it was but it is definitely not a baseball bat or flashlight or something like that. It's something more like this. And it's this way to the right and to the back of the head. Not on the top of the head, on the back. And I think the reason it makes it's not a perfect rectangle is because her head is sloped. So that's why it makes that shape on the bottom and the top an oval shape. Okay, so here's the conclusions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each experiment and explain the results. But first, I want to tell you that the injury was to her skull was one and three quarter inches by a half inch, which is quite small. And then she had the fracture that goes six to eight inches forward on her skull. Okay, so number one, we did the root beer bottle. And what that did was per I came in from behind her from the right and hit the right side of her head. I didn't mean to do that. I was trying to come down at that one spot that you see in the real photograph, but I missed. And so what that shows you is it's not easy to hit that spot. And it left a two inch diameter dimple. Okay, and then number two was the grip wrench with the rectangular side. And you can see that produces a very good match to the injury. And the dimensions are two and a half inches by five eighths of an inch. So here I noticed that I was hitting it from the wrong angle. I was behind and striking down from a right hand. So what I did on the next one is I got to the left of her and came down from the right hand to try to line it up with her skull. Okay, this one here produces what I think is the closest match, except that it's round or circular instead of rectangular. But the measurement is two and a quarter by three fourths of an inch. And you can see it's in Pretty much exactly the same spot. Why it doesn't look exactly the same is the photograph, the real one to the left, is looking straight down on the skull, where the photograph that I took is from the back of the head. The real murder weapon is kind of a combination of that grip wrench and the socket wrench, the back end of the socket wrench, because the weapon is rectangular and it's still probably a little bit thinner, skinnier than the ones that I use so far. Okay, the last object was the trophy, the smaller trophy. And it makes a good match, except it's too big. It's a two and a half by three quarters of an inch, which is bigger than the real um, skull fracture indentation. Well, I can scratch this off my bucket list.
Well, this ends this episode of Unsolved. And I don't know what it's like watching this compared to actually doing the experiments. But this definitely gave me a clear idea what happened and how the injury was caused. It's just a question of what instrument it was. Um, the next episode will be about John and Patsy covering up the crime. And then on Saturday night will be back to Arthur Lee Allen in the Zodiac Killer. So I'll see you the next time.